Hi, I'm Cynthia Levinson, and I want to thank the Texas Book Festival and Abrams Publishing for letting me to come talk with you. I wish I could be with you. If I were in Austin, for sure I would be there. Um, but this is the next best, and I really appreciate this a lot. So thank you, Texas Book Festival and Abrams Publishing. So the reason I mention Abrams in particular is that the Texas Book Festival invited me to talk about a book that Abrams published just this past April called, ta-da, you can see it here with all my sticky notes, The People's Painter, How Ben Sean Fought for Justice with Art. That is the front cover of the book. And I'm also going to show you the back cover. Actually, I should be more precise. This is the front jacket cover of the book. And here is the back jacket of the book. The reason I make a distinction between the cover and the jacket is this. If you take the jacket, I mean, you know, I don't know what it's like in Austin right now. I'm in Boston and it's kind of cool here and I'm going to go out pretty soon and pick up my granddaughter and I'm going to put a jacket on. So my coat, right, my coat, my book has a jacket too. Well, it's not cold for the book. But anyway, books get jackets. Now, if you check out books from the library, which I hope you do, they often come with a plastic cover of, over them. So you can't take the jacket off. But if you have books of your own or friends and you can take the jacket off, sometimes it's really fun to take a look at what the cover of the book itself looks like. So here's the jacket cover. And here's what the art department at Abrams Publishing did for the cover of the book itself. They're different. And same for the back. Here's, remember the back of the jacket? And here is the back of the book itself. So that's a neat trick if you have that opportunity to take a look at the difference between the jacket and the inside, the cover of the book. And I want to show you two others that are favorites of mine because they're just wowy in terms of the jackets and the covers. This book is by my friend Nancy Tupper Ling, The Yin Yang Sisters and the Dragon Frightful. Here's the front of the jacket, and it carries on, and here's the back. Doesn't that look like a frightful dragon? But look at what they did with the cover of the book itself. Wow, talk about frightful straight on looking right in your eyes. And here is, needless to say on the back, there is the tail of the dragon frightful. One more I'm going to show you because I just think they're so cleverly done. This is a book by Tracy Sorrell, um, and you, it's called, um, what is it called? At the Mountain's Base. And that's the front of the jacket. Here's the back. Again, it carries along. And the book itself looks like this. It's so colorful, and it mimics in a way the jacket cover, you can see, it looks like corn or maize to me, which makes sense because of what the book is about, but also weaving and threads and rooting and um, getting one's base in the land. So I just thought you might like to see that because that's a fun thing to be able to do if you have the opportunity to tell the look at the difference between the jacket cover and the book cover itself. But let me get back to the People's Painter, How Ben Sean Fought for Justice with Art. I want to talk about the title, first of all, The People's Painter. It sounds as if it means that Ben Sean, who was an artist, painted people, which he did. He didn't paint only people. Um, he painted lots of other things, too, like cardboard boxes and stained glass. Um, and he also was a sculptor. He had a lot of artistic media that he worked with. But the title is also kind of a pun, a play on words. He became known as the people's painter because he cared about ordinary people, 
ordinary people um, who worked hard just the way you do, um, who did their best the way I'm sure you do, um, sometimes succeed, sometimes have a difficult time, that's life. He didn't paint only famous people, though he did some of that, and you'll see some in a few minutes. Um, but he was the people's painter because he cared about people from the bottom up. All right, what about this subtitle? How Ben Sean fought for justice with art. Justice, what's that? Um, when I talk with kids in schools or if I were with you in the reading tent, I would say, what do you think? What's justice mean? And a lot of kids say what I would say too: fairness. Justice is being fair. It's being good to people and being equitable. OK, fine. But how do you fight for fairness with art and fight with art? I don't know. Fight. It, it's like weapons, right? Swords. Ta -da. Um, so how do you fight with art? Well, think about this while I'm reading to you some of the story about Ben. And you might want to think about things that you think aren't fair. When I ask kids what they think aren't fair, almost without fail, somebody says being unkind to animals. That's not right. I agree with that. It's not. not. Why, why, why not be nice to animals? Um, some people say climate change is not fair. It's not right. I agree with that also. There are things we could be doing about that um, that would help you too, and you can help also. We could all do something to help in regard to climate change. Think about the things that you think are just or unjust and what you might do with art, with drawing, with painting, with sculpture, or some other way um, to get across your idea of what you think is fair. So I'm going to read to you some pages from the book. And to do that, I'm going to share my screen. So kindly bear with me while I work on doing that share screen here's what i want to share and i want to put this in the view so that you can see it which i hope you can here again is the cover of the book and i'm not going to read the whole thing but i'm going to read part of it because a lot of people don't know about ben sean and um, you'll get an idea of how he fought for justice with art the first thing i can remember ben said I drew. He actually really did say that. From the time he could grasp a pencil, Ben Sean yearned to draw everything he saw in his village in Lithuania. His mama Gittel's hands molding sturdy plates from slippery clay. His tata Hessel carving stout chairs out of spruce trees. And his tata's tata Zeta chiseling wooden skates so Ben could skim across the frozen Neris River. But paper was a luxury in the shtetl, and there was none to spare. So with his finger, Ben traced the Hebrew letters that curled and curved through his book of Bible stories. Then he couldn't stop himself. He sketched in the margins. Some Bible stories, though, enraged Ben, especially when good people got hurt. That's not right. Ben also protested when his cheder teacher wasn't fair. After a classmate pulled a prank, the teacher kept everyone indoors, demanding the culprit's name. I'm not going to tell who it is, Ben declared, and I'm not going to pay for something I didn't do. Refusing to tattle, he walked out. Justice had mattered to Ben ever since he was little. He was only four when Tsar Nicholas II's soldiers hurled rocks through his window and dragged his father away just because Tata had been demanding fair pay for working people. He was banished to frigid, far off Siberia. Ben didn't know yet how to draw his outrage. But feeling his father's boldness inside him, he marched up to the sentry at the end of the street and shouted, down with the czar. The soldier chased after him, but Ben escaped. 
All right, now I'm skipping some pages. So Ben moved when he was a child with his mother and brother and sister. Remember, his father was away in Siberia to America because his father had escaped from Siberia and made his way to America. And this is a picture. This is a three part picture, which in art world is called a triptych that the artist Evan Turk, and you're going to hear from Evan Minute, um, drew to show the family's journey on a boat past the Statue of Liberty, being crowded in um, Ellis Island when they got to America, and then reuniting with Tata. And I would like to think that my family felt that way because my grandparents and uncles also immigrated to this country around the same time that Ben's family did. Not from Lithuania, but from Russia, which is right nearby, practically next door. Um, they came together, but they had family that was already in this country. And I would like to think when those families got back together again, finally, they hugged just like this. So Ben never lost his sense of outrage. And he painted a series of pictures. What he decided he wanted to devote his art to was stories, stories about justice. And he learned about two Italian American immigrants, immigrants like himself and his family, who came from Italy and were accused of murdering someone. At least one of these two men, Sacco and Vanzetti, did not commit the murder. Possibly neither one of them did. And Ben, like many people in the world, really, were, was outraged by this injustice of these men being possibly falsely accused of murder. And he painted a whole series of pictures about Sacco and Vanzetti. And that helped propel him into the kind of artist he became. He was not only a painter, he was also a photographer. And he took pictures throughout the South of America in, in America, southern part of America, of their children here. You can see children in the bottom middle of this picture that Evan drew. These are children who were not able to go to school. They had to go to work because their families, even though they were also working people, were too poor for the kids to go to school. So he took pictures of them. He took pictures of poor people, people who needed a handout from the government in America. You might recognize a couple of people in this picture. Remember I said he, he did draw some famous people. So you might recognize Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. kind of in the middle, sort of left there and below him is Gandhi. Um, and look at the signs. There are protest signs there too for voting, for fair pay, for equal rights. You know, these are issues that we are dealing with today. So even though Ben was doing his artwork almost 100 years ago. He died in 1969, and he was doing these pictures in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. He was dealing with issues that we are still dealing with today. So there's plenty for you to be able to draw about in terms of justice. I want to show you the very last spread in the book that Evan drew. Because here is a picture of Ben himself as a Zeta, as a grandfather, with his hands on the shoulders of a granddaughter. And who knows, but he may be saying to her, it's okay, draw in the margins. If any of you happen to know any Hebrew, Ben used a lot of lettering in many of his pictures. I'll show you one of his pictures in just a minute. Um, the lettering, um, over Ben's shoulder says in Hebrew, Lador Vador, which means from generation to generation. So it's as if Ben is handing to you his offering and his supplication, his pleading. You can draw justice too from generation to generation. And here's an example of where I think Evan might have gotten his idea for drawing lots of doves because Ben drew doves also often for peace and you can see he has lots of lettering here he was interested in lettering very much if you read the book you'll learn a lot about that okay i'm going to stop the share momentarily and um show you a video of evan turk 
talking about how he drew some of the pictures for the book. So I'm going to go back and share the screen again. Uh, I think it's right here. There's a video. And let me start it and let me oops, enlarge it. Hi everyone, my name is Evan Turk and I am the illustrator of The People's Painter, How Ben Sean Fought for Justice with Art. Sometimes when you're working on a project about another artist, there's kind of a, a pressure to, you know, figure out how to approximate their art or to convey what their art is to an audience that might not be familiar. And I think for me, in this book, it was really a fun process because there's already a lot of Ben Sean in my artwork. And it was kind of also similar to the process that Ben was going through in the book, where you're looking at these artists that you admire and figuring out what aspects of what they're doing works for the kind of stories that you want to tell. And for me, it was really exciting to be able to do that for a story about an artist that I admire and really focus in on those aspects of his art that I find so exciting. This is called a dummy, and a lot of illustrators use them uh, to plan out how the book is actually going to feel when you're turning a page. It starts off with Ben as a child, and his drawings kind of always have a childlike feeling to them, so I really wanted the book to start off like this, with just Ben's hands as a child just sort of doodling. And I kind of liked the idea that this was almost him illustrating his own story. So you can see how each page connects to the next one. And you really get the idea of those page turns as you're going through. This was one of my favorite spreads as well. Where ben here is helping his mother and his siblings pack to go to New York, but his grandfather is, can't bring himself to make the journey. He, he talked about how as the train was pulling away, he was holding onto his, his grandfather's hand, which is just such a, a poignant thing to hear, but also something that I think really conveys that feeling of having to leave everything you know and go somewhere new. This page, which you can actually see behind me, turned from uh, two images into three in the final illustration. And this is actually also one of my favorite scenes in the book, and it's actually one that didn't originally exist because there's no text on this page, so it wasn't in the original manuscript, but I liked the idea of having that moment where Ben arrives in New York and is reunited with his father. I wanted that to be like a really pivotal moment in the book. Here is kind of this downshot of his family arriving at Ellis Island. So you can see how he and his mother kind of stand out amongst this huge crowd. And, it, you know, reading all of, and listening to all of the oral history uh, reports of Ellis Island, it's just kind of this insane process where there's so many people crammed into this one space and everyone there is hoping for kind of this American dream and the first thing that they get is crammed into this space uh, where they're you know tested and prodded and asked all these questions in different languages and so I thought it was kind of interesting to have that you know be kind of this moment where it's not maybe what they were hoping once they get there but as soon as they're reunited with Ben's father you know all of that that journey becomes worth it and all of the change that they're about to, to deal with becomes worth it once they're together again so this was kind of one of my favorite spreads to work on as well just having that kind of wordless pivotal moment in his life and that transition into the new the new life that he was going to have in New York one of the things that I really love about Ben so I'm going to stop the share again. Thank you, Evan, <laughs> for that video, that explanation. I learned things. I thought I knew a lot about Ben Sean, but I learned so many things from Evan as he did his research for the book as well. And did you notice he said that one of his illustrations turned from two to that three to that triptych? Artists and authors do a lot of research and a lot of drafts um, and redrafts and we just we don't get done until the book is going to print or you know an editor says stop please just cut it off anyway we keep working and researching and love it and get exasperated but one of the things I love about writing especially nonfiction for kids is the research I get to do I've worked in archives and in actually a condemned building building with yellow police tape because it was the building 
was going to collapse. Fortunately, it didn't. Um, I did research for a book about circus. It's kind of over my shoulder there. Kids who are circus performers. Um, I did some of the research by falling off a rolling globe, falling off of a tight wire, falling off of a mini trampoline, and almost throwing up on a lira, which is a round trapeze. I considered that research. What I really love is going to places to meet people and just breathe the air and eat the food. So for the circus book, I got to go to northern Israel and stay with Jewish and Arab families, which was absolutely wonderful. Um, and for this book on Ben Shon, um, I got to go to Washington, D.C. and to New York um, and to New Jersey, where I talked with Ben's son. And I got to see Ben's studio with the tables where he worked and his paint pots and brushes and everything. That was great. Um, I'm working on a book now. Shh, don't tell anybody. The announcement's not out yet, but I'll have to share it with you. I don't think I'm going to get to go on a research trip to the place where this book is about because, well, except for people on the International Space Station, very few people have been there. But you'll find out about the book in a little while. Um, but as I said, I got to go to New Jersey um, to see where Ben worked. And one of the things that he painted is a huge mural in what's now a school in the town of Roosevelt, New Jersey. And you might want to look this up because the school is old, the town is small, there were fewer and fewer children going to the school, and there's a chance that the building is going to stop being a school and it might be torn down. And we don't know what's going to happen to the mural that was painted by Ben Sean that's in this school building in Roosevelt, New Jersey. So. You know, you might want to just look that up and, and see if there is um, what might be able to be done to try to save this mural. Um, so um, I mentioned that I um, think it's fun to look at the insides of books, you know, the, the jacket and then the inside cover. Well, a little bit about me, which relates to the insides of a book. Um, I live in two places. I live in Boston, where I am now, and also in Austin. Yay, Austin. Yay, Boston. I find it helpful to live in places that rhyme. That's why I'm less likely to get lost. Um, I have two children, and each of them has two children. They live in two different places. My husband and I um, wrote a couple of books together. Let me see. I think I can show you one. There's one over my shoulder. It's a graphic novel. And this is one we wrote together called Fault Lines in the Constitution. He writes lots of books. And in one of the first books he wrote, in the acknowledgments, here's why I get to the insides of a book, not picture books. Well, no, that's not true. Many times picture books do have acknowledgments. In fact, I think I do have acknowledgments in this book. Um, Many books have acknowledgments. That means thank yous. The author and the illustrator want to thank the people who helped them, their editors and the people that they got to talk with while they were doing their research and their family members. Well, when my husband wrote his one of his first books, our children were little and they really didn't help him write the book at all. But he still wanted to thank them because, as he said, they are thoroughly splendid people. So if you take a look in the back of any of my books in the acknowledgments, you will see that I thank our family. Now it's our daughters and their husbands and our grandchildren. Oh, I haven't thanked the grand puppies. I think I'm going to have to start thanking the grand puppies too. Even though they're not thoroughly splendid people, they are certainly thoroughly splendid puppies. Anyway, in the acknowledgments of all of my books now, I thank our entire family for being thoroughly splendid people, as I know you are. So think about how you would portray being fair, being just through art of your own. Thank you.
Thanks from Boston. Thanks to Austin. I miss you. I'll be back soon. Bye.